Hello again, Mr. RG Stuff back in the workshop and uh, on the bench today, well, it's another 3D printed sound box. You may remember from my uh, last video, I built uh, this 3D printed sound box, um, which um, worked sort of, um, but uh, was the uh, most unsatisfactory in the, uh, the sound department. Um, and uh, this one was based on um, this uh, H and V uh, number four. Um, it's a similar sort of size. It's actually um, I ought to point out that the H and V is much much thinner, and this is one of the problems that I will have um, with tracking on these three D printed ones, as I haven't yet figured out how to get them as thin as the H and V number four. Anyway, I must admit I was very surprised and pleased by the. Uh, amount of interest my last video created. I think I've had more comments on that one than any uh, other video possibly. Um, I'd also like to say up front that I'm very grateful for all the support I've had on this project and all my other projects. And uh, I'm very grateful to each and every one of you um, for watching and commenting on my videos. Um, for this next version, I have made some improvements, um, which I'll go through in a minute. Um, some of these are things which I thought of anyway, and some of them are based on the uh, suggestions which uh, you've all made in the comments. And uh, hopefully I won't uh, upset anybody by not mentioning your name, but I'd just like to call out um, a few of the suggestions and, uh, and talk about what I've done. Now David Kay mentioned that my diaphragm was too thick. This new one that I've printed is actually 0.4 millimeters, which is considerably thinner than the um, the one millimeter style that I was using before. Now, I did try printing even thinner. This one is about uh, 0.1 of a millimeter thinner, but um, you can see light through it. So I'm really not that convinced that it's gonna work well um, for uh, pushing air around. Purple Smiley Monster suggested adding a spline to the needle bar and Neil McCorn suggested rotating it 90 degrees in order, in both cases, to make it stiffer. Now what I've done is I've redesigned it as a three part piece here. So um, it's uh, adjustable so I can fit it and then basically glue it into place. And um, the central section is much stiffer. Um, so that I think that's gonna work much better. I've also been able to incorporate Paul Harrison's suggestion to reduce the weight of the uh, connection of the needle bar to the diaphragm by using just less nuts and bolts. So I'm only going to need uh, these three little ones here rather than all that I had before. I've also used Paul's suggestion to make the needle bar pivot more adjustable with set screws to try and reduce the needle bar buzz. So these are um, 3BA grub screws, which is a very odd size, but they're about four millimeter and they're sort of just screwed in from the end. So I've done that rather than using gramophone needles like on the previous version. Quite a few of you also mentioned the possibility of using other materials to make the diaphragm from. So I hope to do a video in the future to cover this. Otherwise, I've made a few um, other adjustments. So I've made the, uh, the back piece. So the, the bit where it joins onto the gramophone, I've added an isolator um, in here so um, basically on the back there's a little plate that fits there's a rubber ring that fits into that plate I'll get that plate the right way around and then this bit fits on top and that's all glued into position so that's a rubber isolator between the, uh, the tone arm and the back of the uh, the sound box um, also this bit here holds the uh, three M16 washers, um, which add about 30 grams worth of weight. Uh, other than that, I've made um, this bit here thicker um, to make sure that there's enough rigidity in this part here in case there was any flex. Um, but that's essentially it. So um, otherwise, it's really much the same, the same sound box as uh, this one here. It's going to be a little bit deeper, which uh, is unfortunate but I think for the minute it'll just have to do. Right, well, it's done. All the glue's dry. Now time for a test. So first of all, quick way, that comes in at uh, just over 73 grams. 
Um, the uh, the previous version that was 37 and a bit grams, and um, this is too heavy for these scales. But it, this was about 130 grams. So um, I'm going to compare all the sound boxes together and spice the video together so you can hear um, the differences between them. Well, that seemed to work quite well. Um, this uh, this new version does seem to work uh, quite a bit better than the uh, the previous version. Um, it's uh, certainly louder. I can see uh, when I edited the uh, the previous bit of video together that it was definitely louder than the previous version, but not as loud as the uh, HMV number four. Um, but the whole arrangement seems to be better. I did add in uh, rubber washers here and here. Um, which I don't think I mentioned and I also didn't mention the fact that I've only used three nuts and bolts um, That's apparently the sort of ideal number to get the uh, the pressure on the uh, the diaphragm um, Even but to be honest, I don't think it would have made much difference in this case um, Yeah, so uh, a success um, Clearly it can be improved. It can be louder I don't think the uh, the tonal range um, is uh, as good as the HMV number four, but uh, it certainly is the best one I've built so far. Maybe I'll have to compare it to the uh, the one that I fabricated um, with uh, only uh, a few uh, 3D printed parts and mainly just cardboard and metal and stuff. Okay, well that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and if you have enjoyed this video, please subscribe to Mr. Stuff. Thank you.